we talk about this all the time. There's intent versus perception. Uh, and yet when you have a low standard for children, uh, for example, it might just be cleaning their room yeah. or it might be something on follow through. You know, mm-hmm. they sign up for a sport or an activity and they decide quickly that they want to quit. Um, you know, you could say, oh, they're just a kid. Or you can say, have an expectation of no. One of our core values is we follow through on our commitments. Welcome to the Uncommon Freedom Show. Our purpose is to equip and inspire you to reach your potential, maximize your impact, and live a great life while you make the world a better place. I'm Kevin. And I'm Becca. We're your hosts. Today, we're starting a brand new podcast series all about parenting. In our LaunchWell series, we talked briefly about setting goals with your kids. But in this episode, we're going to dive deeper into why it's such an important part of parenting with purpose. And before we get started, we want to remind you that we would love your five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening. And if you're enjoying the show, please subscribe and share it with your friends and family. All right, before we get started, Beck. Yes. So we just got back from spring break less than a week ago. Yep. Uh, Had an awesome, in my opinion, awesome time with the kids. How was it? We We went on a ski trip to Jackson Hole. Wyoming, you haven't been known to actually love skiing. So how was it for you? It's getting better every year. And one of my favorite things is just the fresh air, being unplugged as a family, um, the conversations, although sometimes sideways, but the ones that kind of come about and family dinner or game time, just good quality family time, somewhat forced at times that uh, develops. Yeah, I agree. It was a blast. And uh, I just love any type of family activity where you're actually active. Yes. Uh, you know, just burning energy. Exhausted really kids at facing the end of the a day. challenge. Like for me, the older two boys have a um, little more advanced in their skill set and all, a little more uh, 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 adventurous in the the level reckless. of reckless. Uh, reckless, maybe. Reckless abandon. Uh, of hills that they're willing to tackle. And so uh, we, we faced some challenges together and had a good time. So, yes. Whether we found that. Uh, skiing, snow skiing is a really fun activity that uh, being on a boat is a really fun activity. Anything where you're active outside, it just seems like to be the best family experiences. So we encourage Agreed. you all to find out how how you can make that happen. Yes. Right? It takes time and tension and sometimes money, but it, it's important. And for us, we have that limited amount of time with our kids. We're definitely on the countdown with a couple of the older ones. And so, um, you know, we expect to still have them in our lives, but not at the same level that we get to have them right now. So we're trying to cherish and make a lot of memories. Yeah. All right. We're going to move on to talk about goal setting, specifically with our children. And in a paper on goal setting, researchers found that setting goals is linked with self-confidence, motivation, and autonomy. That was a paper written by Locke and Lathan back in 2006. And also, children learn to be resourceful through the practice of being goal-directed. Fostering resourcefulness involves encouraging students to plan, strategize, prioritize, set goals, seek resources, and monitor their own progress. Beck, as we have implemented on a kind of a micro scale, uh, but an appropriate scale, goal setting with our kids, do you have any uh, either interesting stories or anecdotes you want to share? I think just that, you know, personality, especially at this age, is such a huge part of uh, watching this happen. You know, so we are firstborns, goal-driven people, yourself and I. And so therefore, yourself and I, is that the right way to say it? You, you and, and I, I. You and I. And, um, and I realize all, not all of our kids are created like us. In fact, many are created quite different. Uh, um, firstborn is very much not a typical firstborn. Yeah, poor kid. He's getting raised by parents who <laughs> expected him to uh, show up more like us. But at the same time, we what I keep talking about on the podcast is I keep comparing who I am today, not who I was as a teenager, which was a hot mess, mm-hmm. you know, emotional, random, messy. Um, and we have those parts of our personalities still, but, you know, we have many, many years, decades actually, of personal development and growth that have happened. And so it's just a reminder to meet people where they're at and then help them move forward. So we've talked to our kids about goal setting. Um, some of our kids are very goal oriented. So they think about, you know, what they want to achieve. What's interesting is uh, it's like the three little bears in our household. So we have one child who uh, doesn't have a lot of goals for themselves, doesn't choose to set goals for themselves very easily and doesn't really um, 
want a lot of accountability about it, would just like to let life happen. And a lot of it is how their brain works. They just don't, they have a tough time moving into the future and seeing things very far down the road. And we're learning that about that person. So it's helping us not be so challenged by the fact that they just don't want to or, or willing to. And so we have to move the goals much closer together. Like what could you do today for a test tomorrow? Not what are you going to do in six months or how in the heck are you going to plan your 18th birthday? You know, that kind of stuff is too far out. Another one of our children has lots of great ideas, very creative and loves to fill things out. This is probably how I was a lot at that age, just writing and journaling and making goals for myself, but it's the follow through and the stick to itiveness that we have yet to see really happen. Like this child will come up with a workout plan for themselves every couple months and it'll be like, that sounds wonderful. How are you going to implement that? And then we see them do a few things for a couple of days and then beep, Peter's off. Um, and then one kid is just balls to the wall, hair on fire, kind of gets a lot done, but rarely plans. He's like the ready aim fire. He's like the ready fire kid all the time. And so it's, you know, it just takes some patience to teach him to slow down a little bit and use some accuracy, I think, in, mm -hmm. in a lot of his things. And with him, thoroughness can be missed quite a bit. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But he's got the hustle. So it's like if we put all the three kids together, <laughs> which I'm sure most parents would say, we'd have this incredibly well-rounded individual. But that's not how God created us. We or all have a really horrible person. Or a crazy <laughs> nutcase. Yeah. I mean. And then, of course, there's Evie. Oh, who man. We're not quite to goal setting yet. But uh, we have no doubts that uh, we'll get there with her. It'll be very interesting. It will be. It will so be. our journey toward a parenting with purpose led us to truly believe in the importance of goal setting with our kids. Think about that parenting with purpose. It started with an end of the year review where we would, you know, go out to eat or sit down in the, in the home and just kind of review the kids goals and how the year went. Um, and then set some new goals. And we started that a couple of years ago. We usually do it right at the end of December. We try to do it over Christmas break, of course, when everyone's minds are clear and cheerful and, you know, the holidays have, have, um, wrapped up just like most human beings. It's sort of the wrap up for the year and the beginning of a new fresh start. Yeah. Uh, so growing up, did you have goals as a child? I think, you know, as a teenager and like middle schooler, definitely as I got older in high school, I had lots of goals, you know, where I was going to go to school, whether I was going to play ball, um, play sports, the jobs, the savings. I had lots of goals like that. Um, I don't know that my parents ever sat me down and said, you know, we're going to do some goal setting with you, but it was part of the structural tension that I grew up in in my home was knowing what was going next. I have parents who are probably pretty goal driven as well. So it was something that I think I more caught than taught was taught, but at the same time, you know, yes, to move forward, I'm an achiever by nature. So I think for me, goal setting is probably part of my DNA. And I don't think I achieved that much early in life, but as I got older, you know, then it became more important to me to actually finish what I started and to set achievable goals that I could reach. What about you? I, I think I had lots of dreams, hmm. but didn't really, you know, if a goal is a dream with a plan, I didn't have many goals, if any. Mm. Um, it wasn't something that my parents specifically formally discussed with me, although I, I was mentioning to you that uh, I remember my dad listening to lots of tapes of Zig Ziglar and Dennis Waitley, I believe was his name. He was another kind of motivational type of speaker back in the, I think, primarily the 80s. And so I think there's actually kind of this osmosis influence that mm -hmm. those tapes had uh, because I, I remember listening, you know, with many times with annoyance, like, Oh, why can't we listen to Michael Jackson on the radio? Yeah. Uh, but you know, you know, kudos to my dad for, you know, listening to that and just putting me in an environment that, you know, probably had more of an impact on me than I know. It just showed up later in life, but I definitely did not really have formalized goals. And I don't think my parents operated like that as well. So it's not really a surprise. Okay. Um, interesting. And then as we got going with our kids, so it started with, I think, talking about that things and then realizing that we wanted to have kind of a goal sheet that we worked off of. So a couple of years ago, we kind of found something and we adapted it to our own. We've, we've, um, iterated it a couple different times in the last few years. I love the one we have now. It's still very simple for kids. So um, it's, you know, looking at a little bit at how their year went, their favorite memories, and then setting intentions. And then this last year, we actually added in the categories of spiritual, physical, and financial for them. And it's just a tiny little writing spot. So it's like, hey, pick one financial goal, pick, you know, one health goal, something like that. Um, and then we've realized in some of our 
you know, planning that having at was great, but then reviewing it once a year was useless because it's like, we don't know how they move the dial forward. They don't know how they do move the dial forward. So our goal, and we still fail about one third of the time is to take this paper with us on our quarterly debts, deep emotional bonding times. Um, when we take this individual kid out with both of us together, uh, once a quarter and really go through it and say, Hey, how are you doing in these areas so that we can help them not just set goals, but actually achieve goals through actionable steps in a shorter time frame, that medium frame of reality. Yeah. And just for our listeners who haven't caught our debt rotation, the only, well, we're, we're close to being able to pay off our mortgage. And that is the only debt that we have other than the debts that we do with our kids, which is uh, a quarterly rotation. Are we, you and I together take our oldest out in January and then our middle son in February and then our youngest Dylan in March, and then we start the cycle over again. Evie gets time with us just because she's in half day kindergarten. So at right. some point she'll formally get put into that rotation as well. Uh, but the goal is for us to have that conversation with our children over their quarterly debt, which will allow for a lot more really progress. Yeah, yeah. And progress towards that goal. Exactly. Um, so do you have any stories of how goal setting has worked? with our kids? Um, do we have any stories of how it's worked? Of course we do. I'm sure we have. I would love to see their goals actually. What's, um, go, we should have brought their papers down here. Um, but going back in the last couple of years, you know, some of them had goals for travel, which they gave in, um, input on for our family, which was helpful. Um, and what I like is because we let them choose where their giving goes. So I think for some of them, just, um, deciding what they want to give to from a spiritual standpoint is helpful. One of the other categories we talk about is something new you want to try. Oh, that's right. So, yes. so whether it's an activity or even a type of food, uh, like it was a couple of years ago, I think our kids wanted to try octopus. Yeah, and, and cauliflower. Uh, yeah, maybe. it was it was something like that, and we were cauliflower on, in my dreams. I think we we're on a, a cruise with the kids. Oh yes, and our I think it was our oldest who was into very bougie food at the time. Yeah, took advantage of being able to have some of that bougie stuff. On the cruise. Caviar, so, yes, but things that we wouldn't spend out. money on. It worked yeah. out. So what we like about the sheet is it does, yeah, it challenges them to think not just like, okay, what do I want to do to move my life forward, which is a very serious way to think about life as a kid, but, you know, what kind of experiences do you want to have? Um, and now that we're talking about it, I mean, I think it's just even a reminder when they set the goals, you know, what kind of people do you interact with? What kind of, you know, do you want to add some friends to the people that you hang out with, you know? Um, and just getting them to think about their associations and how they spend their time as well. And it was actually, I would say one of the wins was when Dylan spoke at Level Up last month and he gave a little bit of a testimony about growing up and you could tell that how he spends his time is something that we talk to him about a lot regarding his goals and how to you know grow and move forward in sports and academics um, and life in general. You know, you can tell that it's getting through to him, even though he doesn't want to make the decision to cut back on what he would deem as, you know, screen time that he loves to have. Um, but he, it's there. He's thinking about it. Why would you say that goal setting or having goals uh, and for parents to have expectations of kids is an important part of parenting with purpose? One of the phrases that comes to my mind is, I don't remember who said this, it's probably been said by multiple people, but people rise to the level of your expectations and expectations. Sometimes we call it the E word, right? When you right. have uncommunicated expectations, especially in a marriage, uh, because we always see, you know, our expectations, our expectations are based on many times our perspective. Right. And we talk about this all the time. There's intent versus perception. Uh, and yet when you have a low standard for children, uh, for example, it might just be cleaning their room. Yeah. Or it might be something on follow through, you know, mm -hmm. they sign up for a sport or an activity and they decide quickly that they want to quit. Um, you know, you could say, oh, they're just a kid. Or you can say, have an expectation of no, one of our core values is we follow through on our commitments. In right. fact, you know, we, we have a, an example that um, our oldest got invited to go away this weekend with a friend yeah. and he has a job. Uh, unfortunately, he's trying to work more. They're only scheduling him right now for one day a week, and it happens to be Saturday, which is a really crappy Three schedule to Three hours on a have. Saturday night, just a teenager's yeah. dream. And, um, you know, we we had this, you know, discussed with him, hey, you know, if you can get someone to take your shift, absolutely you can go. 
And he realized like he wasn't gonna be able to get someone to take it. And, and really without us having to have a discussion and say, you know, kind of talk about the core value of keeping his commitment. He, he's like, I'm not gonna be able to go. I can't get in anyone to take my shift. And that was, that was, that was a really cool sign of maturity and responsibility. I was responsibility. just going to say sign of maturity. Cause yeah. yes, the less mature version of himself in the past would have been like, I just, I'm not going to show up for work. I can quit this job. I don't like it anyway. Right. I'm almost 16, which a quick plug. If you have uh, any jobs, you'd love to hire a 15 slash 16 year old for, and you live in our area, let us know. He'd love to be entrepreneurial and uh, he's looking for work. So um, but anyway, yes, I agree with you. And that was one of those things that we have trained the kids on for a while. We do it a lot when it comes to chores around our home and it's hard. I would say the thing about accountability and goal setting is that it's not going to be easy. And one of the things I think parents can take too far is that they're trying to make their child into this perfect person who has all the credentials for college and is perfectly set up to go into the NFL and the NBA and it creates this tension in the child's life where they don't get to just be a kid. They don't get to unplug or they may not even want some of the things that their parents have set up for them on the other end of the spectrum. And probably more lately, what we're seeing is almost like a lack of growing up and having any accountability and just letting these basically teenagers who become young adults, uh, just kind of free float, free float through life. And that's not serving us as a country at all. And it won't be serving us in future families and things like that when there isn't a sense of accomplishment and purpose. So it's, I think it's a balance and you have to be cautious with how you navigate that in the parenting world. But that's why we like letting the kids set some of their own goals. We're not setting them for them so much, but we're teaching them how to be accountable and helping them with them. And that's the part, the messy middle. That's the part that we're stuck on right now, I think. And, and also really trying to instill the standard of excellence in mm -hmm. our kids and there is a balance because we talk about, you know, successful people know what to quit and when to quit it. Like right. there's, there's businesses that some people start and clearly, you know, you, whatever you, you planned or you didn't plan, but you're continuing to lose money at some point you have to say, you know what, it's time to quit. You know, there's so many stories of the, some of the most successful people in the world today um, they, and I think Richard Branson's one that we've heard about, like the number of business ventures he's had that have failed is significant. The difference is the number of ones he's had that have succeeded outweighs and outnumbers the ones that have failed. But it's, it's so important that if that to instill the standard of excellence in our kids, because it's such a lacking character trait anymore. Right. You and I talk about the fact that, you know, if you're a service provider today, it seems like the standard is just good enough. Right. Like you don't even have to be great to stand out. Like if you're just good anymore, that you're up head and shoulders above everyone else. And so if you can be excellent in a job or in anything that you do, you will stand out. Um, do you want to talk about some of the ways that we motivate our kids or maybe consequences that we impose or, or maybe consequences isn't the right word, but, uh, create some push pull if they, if they lose focus or interest. Yeah. Well, again, I think that when we set them up for something like the sport they're going to play for the next season, it's a commitment to the season. And there's only been a few exceptions to that. Um, which also means you're going to go to the practices unless there's something in the family calendar that cannot be moved or shifted that we feel is more important. Otherwise, even when you don't feel like it, you show up for practices. Um, we've talked to our children about grades and we haven't pushed, you know, a straight A agenda, even though we've got kids capable of that. It's more of saying, you know, what do you want to accomplish this quarter? And we're going to incentivize that at the end of the quarter based on both your behavior at school and your academic um, performance. Um, and then also there's a few consequences in there when they go below what we feel is like an acceptable standard, which we've discussed ahead of time and said. And it's also yeah. individualized to each of our children yes. because uh, we have at least one that, straight A's are totally within his, like very realistic for him, yes. maybe two. And for another, it's, it's not a realistic standard for him. It takes a lot of effort it, to get yeah, um, good grades, right? which and, we're pleased with. Yeah. yeah. And again, a lot of what we're looking for is effort and follow through. Um, you know, some of the kids that don't perform as well academically also load the dishwasher appropriately, like almost every single time and clean up after themselves. And they have this good follow through sense when it comes to just the things they're asked to do around the house, their chores. Um, another kid, you know, has a lot of capability, but 
has more of a lazy spirit. So it, so it seems. And so they just kind of leave things around continuously or they have to jobs. And again, as a parent, it's so much easier to just do it yourself. Um, I actually had that happen yesterday. The kids were all at school. The kitchen table was still dirty from the night before. I didn't want to live with a dirty kitchen table all day. So I sprayed it and wiped it off. But that's one of our children's jobs and they missed it last night or the night before. So um, in a normal circumstance where they were in the household, I would never do that. I would call them back and ask them to do it again. Um, what about you? Can you think of any examples? I know that on their like chore checklist, we well, kind of- I was just going to say thank you for that reminder because yes. I'll be sure to make a note on their chore checklist. And and so basically, you know, we do not believe in allowance, um, but we believe in the value of, of really instilling uh, financial stewardship in our kids at a young age. And so even with Evie, who's only five and our other kids when they were young, we gave them a commission um, and we're not paying them to do things um, that they should do because there's some things that they just do. But we right. also want to make sure that they get to steward money at a young age. Right. And, um, and, you know, we believe in giving, sending, giving, saving and spending. And it's less about a formal 10% than to just build the muscle of, okay, I'm giving a portion of everything that I earn. But it's also, you know, there's a, above and beyond, you know, doing their own stuff. There's, you know, they can earn, there's basically what we've done is we said, this is what you can't earn. And if you do everything, this is, you know, you'll get paid this. And if you miss things, then you'll, you'll just be docked at that. And so that's kind of a natural consequence. And it teaches them that at some point you're going to have a job or a coach or a, you know, a teacher or something like that who has an expectation. And when you don't meet those expectations, there are consequences. I don't know if it was Henry Cloud, but they talk about you get what you expect and what you tolerate. And yep, so absolutely. I think for us, it's a balance, obviously, in parenting kids who are developing into young adults. But again, with grades, one of our kids was like, well, how come I can't have all you know, of this letter grade. And we said, because if we set the standard there, then you'll go ahead and go below that standard and just allow yourself to have that. So we've raised the standard to something we agree is reasonable between us. And we're going to hold you to that standard because we want you to set expectations for yourself that are higher, not lower. And um, again, I think without that, that child would just keep going down that path of, I don't care and Absolutely. it doesn't matter. And I may not graduate. Yeah. Um, no, the concept of you get what you tolerate is really profound uh, for many adults. Like if you just think about potentially abusive or unhelpful relationships that you're in and you take the abuse, you know, you tolerate it, you're going to continue to get it. There's a lot of parents who tolerate disrespect or, you know, a lack of response from their kids. Mm -hmm. And it's, we, we, we check ourselves on a regular basis. Like, well, hold on a second. No, I just asked you to do something or I called your name. I expect a response. And if as a parent, we tolerate them, to ignore us or just continue doing whatever they're doing, you're going to get that. And the other thing that I would say when it comes to goals and specifically some of our expectations for grades and other things is um, for the most part, this is a two-way conversation. Like when we're right. at the beginning of a school year and we even re-evaluated with at least one of our kids, I think midway through the year. But when we sit down, you don't, I just say, you know what, this child's capable of straight A's. This one's capable of straight A's. We'll let them, we'll tolerate. We don't tell you know, them what two, their yeah. expectations are. We, we have a collaborate. conversation. We collaborate. Yeah. Say, Hey, what do you think is reasonable for you? What do you think you're capable of? Right. And the beautiful thing about that is it gets a lot of buy-in. Right. And of course, human nature is they're going to complain. We say, well, hold on a second. Time out. We talked about this. Right. Oh yeah. And they don't like to be reminded of that. Right. But at that point, it's like, this is something that we agreed on. Um, how about any ideas on how to celebrate success when it comes to uh, goals? Well, I definitely feel like, you know, for each individual child, it's knowing a little bit more about their love language and the effort that goes into things. So whenever we see something that's being met or worked towards, um, I think as a teacher, what I learned early on is it's not just saying, um, that's a beautiful picture, Evie, but saying, I see you worked really hard on that because what I'm noticing about it, and it's important for parents and teachers and educators in people's lives to talk about the behavior that got someone there, not the work that showed up on the other side, because someone might be a super talented artist and their work does look really nice. And someone else might not be that good at drawing, but they put a lot of effort into it. And you're not going to tell them authentically like, well, that looks like crap. 
Um, but if I also tell someone whose picture does look a little crappy, like that is so beautiful. I'm also lying to them mm-hmm. and I'm teaching them that um, they're, I, I'm telling them something that's not necessarily true. So I'm not being honest. But if I say to them, I see that you worked really hard. Wow, you used a lot of colors in that picture. Look at the definition that you put on there. I see that I noticed that you um, caught all kinds of small parts of the backyard when you were drawing. I'm pointing out the effort that they put in and the intention. And so that is so so much more connected to the work ethic that delivers. Because we talk a lot about like grit and how grit and talent um, can compete against each other or work together. And honestly, grit is so much more important than talent because talent without grit doesn't go very far. Uh, Talent with grit is amazing. That's probably where a lot of the elite athletes come from. And then grit by itself can get you sometimes further than just talent. And um, so I think for us, it's noticing the behaviors and the action steps more than just the outcome. That's awesome. So as we wrap up, two things I want to really focus on is that you can train your children to lead the life they want instead of accepting the life they've been given by teaching them the importance of goal setting at an early age. And the second is take child personalities into consideration when setting goals and expectations with them. So good, because as I tell them all the time, you know, we love them uh, uniquely. So even though we don't love one more than the other, we love them in a unique fashion, which is how the Lord loves us. So thanks for listening to the Uncommon Freedom Show. You can connect with us at beckandkev.com for more resources to learn biblical principles, essential disciplines, and winning habits that help once average people lead the life they want instead of accepting the life they were given. 